Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Victoria and you're watching Victoria's Thinking. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go. is leave it at the door dealing with a relationship that you know you should not even be in um so let's just get right into it um one of the first points i would like to say is you cannot you cannot you cannot raise a man you can't i'm sorry ladies you can't you can try to fix them all you want but it's not it it's not reality. You can't raise a man. If he hasn't had a father in his life, if his father was abusive, if his family structure was abusive or bad, it's more likely to trickle down on him. I don't want to say that don't bash me all. I don't want to say that all men are like that. Like all men who haven't had fathers in their life turn out bad. That's not true. Not true. But you're more likely to have a weaker man in a sense sometimes when he hasn't had I mean unless he's had a good mentor or something if he hasn't had someone to structure what it is to be a man what it is to take care of a family what it is to do what men do women cannot build a man like a man can build a man just like a woman cannot build a, just like a man cannot build a woman to be a woman there needs someone to be there to model it for you. So, um, I say like going into a relationship, if he's not showing you manly tendencies or tendencies to show that, hey, I will be able to take care of you, I will protect you, all that, why would you even put yourself in that situation? Um... I just feel like that automatically will lead to some type of like toxic issues in the future. Um, yeah, like I've personally, like all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and like incorporate into like my own experience with guys. Um, I've dealt with a guy, he didn't um, have a male structure very good male structure and i was thinking you know hey i can be there i can support you i can help you i can do this i can do that we can help each other we'll be together but at the end of the day if he's not there or willing to accept the help not willing to make some changes then it's just it's not going to turn out right and i feel like because of that particular person didn't have the structure as a child and they were all over the place it made what we were trying to do really messy and just it didn't stick it didn't stay it was immature altogether so another thing i want to say is can you really see yourself with this person for the long run like me personally i believe in like when you date someone you're dating to marry that person so when you're with that person are you looking at your angle are you looking long term um what i like to tell people who i can counsel or people who come to me for advice i like to use the term blue fire um does your blue fire ignite with that person and you're probably thinking what what is a blue fire um i like to define the blue fire as by asking this one question i start off um is what is the hottest part of the fire when you look at the structure of a fire 
the hottest part of a fire is the blue flames at the bottom. That's what really keeps the fire going. The blue fire, the hottest part of it. So what is your deepest love for this person? Do you have a deep love for them? Does it go past sickness and health and anything that could possibly happen? Disputes, arguments. Can you see yourself loving them past all the negatives, all the bad stuff? Um, and your negative stuff should not outweigh the positive stuff. And if it does, you need to pack your stuff and go. You should have left that at the door after seeing that. So, um, it's really, really important that even beforehand going deeper into a relationship, can you really see it as better or worse? And if you're not, are you really dating with the right intentions? Are you just dating to date because you're bored? Are you dating because you really, really want to find, you know, a happily ever after? You know, you want to stop searching. You really want to be in a long-term relationship. You don't want to just keep picking up, doing this and doing that and doing that. And giving your, what is my, um one of my mentors like to say, giving your cookies to people who don't deserve your cookies, okay? You shouldn't be giving your cookies without you know, something special on your finger, but you know, um, you shouldn't be giving your cookies to somebody that you don't feel deserves it. Or, you know, you don't see yourself long term with that person. Um, let's see, moving on to another point. I would like to say, I don't, I hate to say this. I don't want to say that children are baggage, but if you're with someone, dating someone, can you see yourself being like a parent? Like if that man or if that woman already has children, can you see yourself really doing that? Like the competition that really comes with that, um, being that you're with him or you're with her and you're helping them raise this child. You're really, really with them. And the other parent isn't so comfortable with that or the other parent feels like they always got to outdo you, level out, overdo you. Um, can you handle that? Can you handle baby mama, daddy, baby daddy drama? Really, can you? Really? Because me personally, I wouldn't want to do it. Um, that's just to me too much. I want to be able to start my own family, do my own thing. Um, I don't want to have to deal with Someone calling me 24-7, what are you doing with my child? Where are you taking my child? Yada, 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 this and that. So you got to really think if you're dating somebody, you're not, if you're dating someone who has children, you're not just dating them. You're pretty much dating their children because you can't have them and not have their children. Not going to work. Your relationship is going to be terrible if you two cannot work. Um, being that they have children, if you can't accept that, do not go into the relationship with that person do not because it's just not going to end well save yourself the trouble and be like hey we can be friends but that's it don't feel bad for saying i have issues with you having children okay you're not obligated to be with them um if that's not something you want um and i know that sounds really terrible but you're not you're not obligated to feel any kind of way. Um, if that's not what you want, it's not what you want. They can't force you. Um, I would also like to say, trust your heart. And I say this because I totally have experience with this. When your heart or when you see a red flag, you know it's a red flag. Trust. It is a red flag. I've had this experience so many times, um, just being with a guy or being around a guy that I was interested in and like so many red flags, like the, the thought of being, you're going to have to end up taking care of him. He doesn't have a good work ethic, this and that and that. And like so many red flags are popping up and I was just like, no, I love him. Oh, here's my Romeo and oh, we're just going to take care of each other. And it's just going to be great. Um, He'll eventually get his education and he'll eventually do this and he'll eventually do that. And I'll just support him until then. And it's going to be great. Don't do it. 
it is heartache you're gonna end up supporting this person for the rest of your life um i just want to say i know this is probably like a little bit off topic is education is really important i mean at least to me education is important um a lot of issues that a lot of women have in america is that um the woman has a higher degree higher degree means higher pay so a lot of times a woman may be making more money than a man and he may grow jealous or upset of the fact that he can't provide a man's natural instinct is to provide and protect his family and if he can't do that of course he's gonna feel some type of way unless you know he's a bum and he just really doesn't care but a good man it, it's going to bother him that he can't provide for his family or that he can't find a job and his woman is out there working hard hours, providing, making money. So for me and my um, personal experience, I am a psychology major. I'm going for my my degrees, okay? I want to go for a doctor at the end. That's my end goal. I want to be a doctor. I want to counsel children. I'm going to be able to help a mentor. So if I had stayed in such a toxic relationship i would have been doing the providing i'm i don't want to say he didn't have a work ethic but i didn't see it um i didn't see him getting out of the position that he was in and i just i couldn't wait i i wasn't i was raised to be an independent black woman but i'm not going to take care of a man who does not have a work ethic who doesn't want to help provide and do things that he needs to do for his family so i really want to encourage you all that once you see red flags do not like act like you don't see them um really 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 trust your instincts on things because i don't want to see people i know personally going through things it's hard to see people that you care about going through things so if you see the red flags boo boo leave him at the door <laughs> moving on um financial care this is really important i say particularly for emerging adults or adults searching for a spouse um college ain't cheap <laughs> unless you're on a scholarship it's not cheap um you're gonna end up with debts a lot of them deep debts um for me i've had the blessings of having a couple of my semesters already paid for so by the time i get out of college it won't be so bad thank the lord hallelujah because only he made a way so for me personally i don't really have to worry about for my first four years being too much into debt because a couple of my semesters have already been fully paid for so i would say when looking for a potential partner and being with a partner, you really want to discuss like debts. You want to discuss like paying back loans. How deep are you? Because if you marry that person, guess what? Y'all both going to be paying for the debts. That That's no cap, okay? You are both going to be paying for that person particular person's debts or y'all both were paying back loans so that is an important conversation um how deep in debt are you what are your loans looking like um another thing you want to talk about or really think about is um are they financially somewhat stable are they good at you know budgeting budgeting is very important especially when you're starting a family you don't want to be with somebody who's just spending money just like that and not even thinking that you have light bills house bills electric bills car bills tires to replace um food clothing there's a lot of things that go into being in a relationship or like a marriage or even starting a family there are a lot of things that you have to think about you don't want to be with someone who has a tendency to just throw away money you don't want someone who's going to throw away money and if that's the case are you willing to work with them on that willing to teach them how to budget teach them how to set money aside and stuff like that so um that is really really important are you willing to work out those financial things together um are you willing to if they don't have credit are you willing to help them build their credit 
um, if they have bad credit or if they're deep in the hole, are you still going to go forward with that relationship with them because of that? Or are you really, really, really willing to work with them? Um, with them on that. And I would say me personally, before I marry someone, um, if they're like deep in the hole, I would want to work with that person. So I mean, I wouldn't mind being engaged, but I really want to work with that person on their financial issues because, um, it's hard to, you know, marry someone and not know that they had financial issues and you you're in a marriage and you think you both are struggling because you're both trying to help that other person pay off what they didn't fix before getting into a marriage. So, um, I say that is really, really important when going into a relationship, you want to look at that before stepping through the door. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, before stepping through the door, these just some of the things I feel that, um, you want to look at. Um, another thing that I want to say is, does this person have anger issues? This is really important. Um, are you willing to cope with this person on this? Are you willing to help them? Are you willing to deal with it? Because I know starting out for me as like a young, young child, I used to be like really angry. I don't know what it was. I used to be <laughs> get angry really, really quickly. And, you know, took a lot of like praying and fasting for me to really get over that. Because like little things just used to make me really irritated. I don't know what it was. So really working on that for me was really, really important. Because I don't want to go into a relationship and they do something and I get angry over something small. Now I'm better at it. Like the smallest things could couldn't make me angry like I'm a genuinely really really happy person um it takes a lot to make me angry now but beforehand I used to just I, number one I just want to say that's the part of the Holy Ghost you know been in the Holy Ghost um it was a change like I'm gonna have to do a separate video on that and like interview my family like it was an instant change for me because I used to be really angry and really really mean and now I'm like really really sweet I'm nicer than what I used to be <laughs> okay um so are you willing to work with that person on their anger or are you willing to cope with their anger is that something you really really want to deal with for the rest of your life till death do you part Okay. Um, another thing I want to say is, can you see past their baggage? Um, I know this is a video about saying, like, talking about baggage and, like, if they got baggage, don't do it. But, like, if you genuinely, genuinely love per a person, can you love them past the bad? And when I say bad, I mean, like, the financial stuff, the small things now they're abusive don't do it i don't advise you to stay with them that's not the type of baggage i'm talking about if they have you know bad baggage like that that's what i'm talking about i'm talking about the small things can you see past if they have um what is it called when, like, let's say if they see a little speck on the table, they always got to wipe the table or they always got to be clean freak or they have to have certain things, certain ways and such and such and such and such. Y'all get what I'm saying? Can you see past the small baggage like that? Can you really, really love and endure them past that? Um, an example that I like to say is the job resume. Like, I'm not talking about an actual job resume. Well, so what? But I'm talking more like a relationship job resume. When you do, when you have a certain liking, when you look for somebody, I like to call it a job resume. Do they have blanks on their resume? Like, if they have a blank, are you willing to look past it? Are you willing to work with them? Or are you just going to say, nah, they don't have what I want? then this this is not gonna work out so are you willing to like really 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 look past it and be like i'm going to work with them um i'm gonna help them be able to fulfill their potential help them to really fill out this resume help them to be great 
And some things you can't do. Some things you can tell people or advise people and you got to step back and let them do it on their own. And that's another way to see if you really, really, you know, if that person really, really is for you, you help them, you talk to them. But you can't make a person slow down for you. You can't make a person speed up for you. So um, are you willing to look past their baggage is an important step. Um, to tie in with that, my next point would be make a checklist. I will never forget the day that my mother told me to make a list, make a list of what you want for me and a man, for anybody else who's watching who may be male, um, what you want in a woman. Um, and I've advised so many people to do this. Um, I found this helpful. She used this with her husband. Um, and they made married for 34 years. I want to say 34. It's 30 something. Okay. Um, she said, make a list. So um, I made a list of what I want in a man. Um, whether it's physical characters, mental characters, ethics, all that type, everything I possibly could dream that I would want in a man and a husband and a father for my children. And when I tell y'all my list is so long, it is so long. It is a beautiful list, I would like to say. But um, make a list of the aspects that you want in a man for you in your life. Um, and after you make that list, um, for me, I pray and fasted with that list. I read scriptures with that list. Um, with that, making that list, I also had to make changes in myself. Um, there's certain things that I had to stop doing that I used to do when I was a high schooler. I had to restart everything. Um, I restarted my social media. Like, I let go of my old Instagram with all my followers on it. I was so close. <laughs> so close. I had so many followers. And I started over. Um, started a new Facebook. Started just. I started over. I started a clean slate because I didn't want the old me to trickle into the new me. And the new life that I'm trying to create and the new path that I'm trying to go down. That's not something that I wanted to intertwine. So I was like, if I'm making this list for him, there's things that I have to prepare myself to put myself together to match this list for him. I had to like redo everything. The things that I used to do, I just, you know, couldn't do or like train myself to do something different. So I say that, you know making a list for the potential partner that you want is very important because then when dating or getting to know someone you already know what you're looking for you already know what you do and you don't want um and after a while after being with that person if they start crossing off a bunch of things that they don't match with your list this ties back into that's a red flag why would you still continue to go for somebody that does not match your list you know, um, that's not good. Don't, don't, what's one of, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't put yourself through something because you're so desperate to be in a relationship. Be happy in your season of singleness. Sometimes God doesn't allow us to be with people because sometimes we need to accept the season of singleness. We need to accept being single. And sometimes... When you're searching so hard, that can become an idol because you want to be in a relationship so bad. And so God is like, well, you need to make time for me. You need to prioritize me. So until you accept your season of singleness, things are just going to keep going in circles. You're going to keep going. I don't know. I don't understand why I can't get in a relationship. I don't, a little blah, 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 blah. You need to accept your season of singleness. Give it to God. Give your situation to God. Make a list. Pray over your list. Pray and fast over your list. And... When is your season and when is your time? And God will send you the person that you're meant to be with. Period. Point blank, blank, blank. That's my opinion. Um, Another thing I want to say is when looking for someone, you need to really, really analyze were they in something toxic? Because you don't want someone who was in a previous toxic relationship to bring that into your relationship. Because they can easily blame you for something that you didn't even do or 
traits that you don't even have. Um, I would say like with me personally, I've been with people who have pitted people do things to them, cheat on them and such and such and such. And like that really created trust issues, um, with that person and myself. And it's just like, well, you can't blame me for something that I did not do. And when I think about talking to people, going with people, it's like each time is a new slate. I can't blame you for something that you did not do to me. Now my trust, if you do something, it's going to take a while to get my trust. No cap. That's just, that's just what it is. Like, I think that's a lot of people. You do something, you lose their trust. It's going to take you a while to get it back, especially if you did something really horrible. But, um... I say starting with a new slate is really, really important. You can't blame somebody else for something that they didn't do. Um, but if that may be the case, that's something you need to think about. Are you willing to work with that person until they get over those fears or get over whatever happened to them in the past? And if they have not opened up to you about it, are you willing to wait for that person or wait with that person and help them work through it? Or start a relationship and be like, make it clear, like, hey, you know, I still struggle with such and such and such. If that other person is like, okay, I'm willing to work with you. We can work through this together. Because everybody has their own struggles. Everybody goes through different things. So are you really, really, really willing to, you know, work with someone who has had a toxic past or toxic past relationships? So those are my nine little, you know, leave the baggage at the door. Um, little advice and tips. Um, that's all I can really think about, you guys. Um, that's just my small advice. Um, if you agree or disagree, this is just my opinion, so it is what it is. Um, I just want people to really find who they're really supposed to be with. Because I'm in love with love. I knew I was in love with love when I was in middle school. I love love. I love people, seeing people in love. I love watching people in love. Seeing people happy. Seeing people happy makes me happy. Um, so those are just my few little tips. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this little tidbit advice video. And until next time, keep it positive.